Modern was, as far as I understood, the band that opened Inferno this year. Yeah. Isn't it quite strange with a, such a band opening an extreme metal festival? What do you think about that? No, I think uh, I think the whole atmosphere of uh, Bardruna and uh, as well as the, the thematics in Bardruna is things that are well known uh, and much appreciated by people that are into metal. It's kind of the same um, feeling and uh, atmosphere so uh, I'm, I think it's very fitting and uh, here in Norway uh, yeah, it's my inspirations uh, there are a lot of uh, Norwegian uh, metal bands and foreign metal bands that are uh, that are heavily influenced by by uh, the old mythology and uh, the old uh, the old Scandinavian ways uh, so uh, I think it's very fitting yeah. actually and I, I think people want to come here and see this uh, ancient beautiful culture presented uh, the way we do. Mm. It's the language of the elders in yeah. different tongues than just yeah, with it's, heavy guitars. It's a universal language really uh, that I think people from all over the world and uh, every ages can relate to in some way or, or another. So. Okay, about the uh, we are here talking with Einar, uh, founder of uh, Norwegian project Vardruna. Congratulations for the great show tonight. It was really, really uh, special as a Thank guest. Um, how did you think that it went? I think it went uh, really well. Uh, it was a it was a great honor for us to to uh, have the opportunity to to play there for the yeah. second time, uh, and, uh, and of course uh, this time uh, when we uh, when it was at night time, uh, yeah. uh, it made it you thought it even was, more you, special. It was better than uh, last year because of the ambiance, because of the, the last year. Lighting. Yeah, in some ways, yes, but. Okay. For me personally, uh, uh, last year that was the first ever Bartruna concert, so that, that was okay. really special for me personally. Um, Bartruna is sort of my. I see. It's like a giving birth or something. <laughs> yeah, well, tonight was really spectacular. Uh, I, I personally, I think everybody in the audience was really blown away. Not only the music, but the atmosphere, the lighting, and uh, the sound was really impeccable. Did it take a lot of convincing? Uh, for you guys to talk to the people uh, that own the museum to, to do this show? The last time, uh, I think, uh, well, both um, we and uh, the, the people at the museum were all thinking that we should do this at night time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, where, yeah, that would fit, uh, fit the atmosphere I even see. more. And so, so that was not any problem. I see. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the beginning of uh, this project. Um, when did you come up with the idea? Were you still um, you were you still in the uh, Gorgoroth at the time? For those of you who don't know, Einar used to be the drummer in Gorgoroth. By the way, which albums did you record with them? Uh, How many I recorded years? Uh, on uh, uh, Twilight. Twilight the, of the uh, Idols. Yeah, uh, I I was in Gorgoroth from uh, 2000 to. Uh, 2004. I see. Um, so, when you decided to start Vardruna, were you still in the band, or was it something that came up after you left Gorgoroth? No, uh, I uh, I started thinking about Vardruna in 2001 and uh, 2001, 2002, and uh, well, uh, the first song I recorded was in the beginning of 2003. I see. Uh, so it's been a Long process, I process uh, finding the right balance, finding in the, the right tools for the job, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and also having time to do it, and that was uh, probably the biggest reason for me uh, leaving Gorgoroth as well, uh, because I wanted time to to do something that is um, more in line with my personal. Uh, uh, both beliefs and uh, uh, yeah, more, clo more close to my heart. I see. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because when you put a lot of time into uh, 
into something uh, and uh, like you do with a, a band like Gorgoroth, uh, it has to it has to feel right and it has to give something back. And uh, I, I really wanted to to spend time with something that. How did um, back. I'm curious about uh, how the association with uh, how did you convince Gaul to be a part of it? He's definitely uh, bringing a lot to the sound. Gaul uh, has actually been a part of this. Uh, when I started dabbling with these ideas, uh, he was sort of my consultant. Oh, and, really? Uh, uh, so it, it was the plan all the time that he was going to. So you to at some point. Uh, come in and record and there's been a dialogue uh, all the way from the beginning I see. Uh, where I th throw my ideas and he... Yeah, yeah. So he see, pretty much he, helped you. Yeah, he, uh, he has a person that knows a lot about um, the old ways. I see. Uh, and uh, it's really, that is what what's close to his heart I see. Uh, as well. Uh, Personally, uh, so so it was only natural in being a close friend to to include him in uh, in this project. You only, uh, from what I understand, um, the album you recently released. Um, it's a part of a trilogy. Yeah. I'm making a, a trilogy called uh, Runa Um uh, What does that mean, by the way? I mean, does it mean something in English? Or? Runes, the sound of runes, okay. or a rune song. I see. A rune song. Um, and um, basically, uh, the concept is that I wanted to uh, to kind of uh, deal with the subject uh, on their own premises. I want to well, the runes are unique and uh, have their own uh, quality and s uh, symbolic value and Absolutely. and and power. Uh, so I wanted to get as close to that as possible uh, when it comes to the instruments I use when I comes to the sounds I use. Um, if I interpret the rune for birch, I go in the forest and I play on birch trees uh, and so on. Yeah. Standing in the middle of the of a river, uh, singing the rune of water. I see. Uh, and and so on. So uh, so in many ways, you can say that uh, it's the runes themselves that are making the music, and I am the so instrument. So they're like you're you're the voice for yeah. them, but they're the one that actually speak through you. Yeah, in a way. because. There are that makes so much sense. Many things that are given. Yeah, uh, you pretty much give them a platform to speak yeah. through, through our journey. Yeah, because I, uh, I deal with them on their own premises. I see. Uh, as much as possible. Um, uh, so I try to uh, uh, approach them uh, both scientifical, runological, yeah. uh, but also. Uh, uh, on a more spiritual uh, level see. as well, uh, and uh, the first album is about uh, basically about uh, sowing a seed, yeah. uh, about creation, uh, and uh, the next album will um, be called um, Yggdrasil, uh, and that is basically about uh, strengthening the seed and I making see. it grow, and uh, the th uh, the third one uh, will be called uh, Ragnarok, uh, and that's the, the end. no, and that's. Uh, that's a, mis a misperception because oh, really? uh, Ragnarok is not the end. Uh, Ragnarok is not Armageddon. Ragnarok is just as much a beginning as an end. I see. So uh, Ragnarok uh, is the ultimate transformation. I see. Um.